everybody and welcome to our virtual victory campaign. We're so glad that you are able to join us this evening or whenever you're watching, maybe you are logging in some later time and watching it off our archive, but whenever you're watching, wherever you're watching, however you're watching, we're glad that you're there with us. It means a lot to us and the way that you can engage the most is to use your faith. It helps to stand up when, when we say stand up. It helps to shout. It helps you. You probably yell back at the TV. You yell back at football games. I know you do. I know you do. But participate mostly by using your faith. Hey, I have a question for you tonight. Do you like gifts? I like gifts. Most people like gifts, but not every gift. Do you ever get some gifts and you want to, you go, oh, thank you very much. And you don't know what to do with it. It's the wrong size. It's the wrong color maybe, or you have 42 of those already, something like that. But what makes a gift special? What makes, when you get a gift, what makes it special to you? Well, the first thing you would think about is who's it from? That really makes a difference. Who's the gift from? And then you might want to look at, okay, what, uh, how much did that cost that person? What did it mean to them? So if it's a $2 gift, but it's from your, your child, your grandchild, then it's really special. If it's a $2 gift from somebody that's got lots and lots of money and it was insignificant. I mean, I knew a lady one time, she had plenty of money, but her favorite gift to give uh, for Christmas was a can of the cheapest hairspray she could find. It didn't carry a lot of meaning, okay? So <laughs> I think about some of our other special gifts that she gave. But you know, what, what did it mean to the person that gave it? And then was it a gift suited to you? Was it something that worked for you? Was it meaningful to you? What is it going to last you? Was it suited directly for you? Something you can use? Is it something that will last? Does it have sentiment to it? Does it have, have a, a, um, something that touches your heart when you see it? When you look at it, when you think about it, will it remind you of the person who gave it to you? Is it special? Is it something that you would want to set out on a table or a shelf, put a frame around it? Something that you want others to know that you have? What kind of gift would it be? Well, let's look for a minute at what the scripture says about the gift of God. In Ephesians chapter four, verse seven, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. This interesting word gift, and it, it, means, it means gift, but it also can mean offering. So it's something that's offered. It can actually even be translated uh, sacrifice. So to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure or the price of Christ's gift, of Christ's offering, of Christ's sacrifice. So whatever he gave, it's equal to the sacrifice that he made. That is a very precious gift indeed. Verse eight, Ephesians four. Therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. So here we see this abundant gift that cost him all that he had. Who gave it? God gave it. What was it? His, his son, the, the, the epitome of himself, the one who walked perfectly with him and for him. And he gave that and Jesus then gave his own life. What a sacrifice. What, what a price, what a value. Is it something that fits you? Well, this grace, many translations, in fact, Amplified says grace was given not indiscriminately, like, okay, everybody gets the same thing, but there's a grace that grace is specifically tailored for you. Not only for you to be born again, but the grace to live, to function, to operate in, in whatever and whoever you are. And in, in, you know, I'm, I'm a woman. There's a grace for me as a woman. There's a grace for me as a teacher, as a mother, as a wife, and as the wife or George Pearson's, there's a grace. 
a grace for every part of my life that God has placed on me and the same for you, very specific. And there's no grace given to you that is more valuable or less valuable than the grace given to me. It's more valuable to you because it's designed for you. Okay, let's go on now. These gifts though, these gifts he says in verse, uh, uh, he gave gifts to men. And in verse 11, we find out he gave, what are the gifts? Gifts to men, apostles, a pro, uh, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These were gifts. In fact, the scripture says bestowed upon us, given to a, a bestowal, something you didn't necessarily deserve or even know you needed, not something you asked for before he decided to give it, okay? And what were these for? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Remember what Jesus said, these works shall you do and greater these, than these works? Well, here we have these gifts who are sent to equip us for that work of the ministry, equip us for the greater works, equip us for the very same things that Jesus did, equip us to minister as he goes on to tell us the equipping for the, to the saints for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ to make us not only individually, but as a body to build us up unified together till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Tomorrow, we'll read another translation for that. To a perfect man, to the measure of the fullness of Christ, to grow up, to look like Him. So these gifts, these gifts that cost Jesus His life to give, what a sacrifice. So that then upon His resurrection, it says, He gave gifts to men, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers, so that you and I could be equipped with that grace that he provided, so that we could be equipped to be what he wants us to be, to do what he wants us to do, and to have all that he wants us to have individually, in our family, in our churches, in our community, our nation, but also in the body of Christ, to equip the church to be the church to equip the church to be that fullness of Jesus, the anointed one in all the earth, not just here in your city or mine, but around the world. What a precious gift. And he says, so that we would no longer be children tossed around, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men. But speaking the truth in love will grow up to all things in him. What a calling, what, what, a, what opportunity we have to grow up in him. But we don't just do that on our own. Should we read our Bibles? Yes. Should we pray? Yes. Do we get revelation directly from God? Yes. But it's still his plan to get the gifts in operation to build you and me up. Now, how do we, how do we appreciate that gift? How do we value that gift? Well, what do we do? We give thanksgiving for that gift. We don't despise the gift. We honor the gift. And the biggest thing you can do in the kingdom of God for anything is to receive by faith the gift. You have to receive salvation by faith. Grace comes by faith. The Bible says everything from God comes by faith. And if we want these gifts working in our lives, for us to do what God gave them to us to do, we have to, by faith, thank Him for them and by faith receive them. I want to ask Holden Hanley to come join me. Holden is part of our prayer team here at KCM and Eagle Mountain International Church, working, those two working together hand in hand, yes, church and ministry, Absolutely. network and school. 
we get to do a lot together. of things together, don't we? Yes, ma'am. So we have a few minutes left here, and I want us to just take this time to praise the Lord for this precious gift that we have. We have gifts on this platform tonight, and our musicians, they're coming as psalmists and ministers of the gospel through music. That's a gift. And then we have the precious gift of Pastor George coming, and then we have Brother Copeland, the ministry of the prophet and teacher to minister to us tonight. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, step right up there, hold on. In the name of Jesus, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart to praise you, to thank you for the precious gift, the precious gift of Jesus, and then the gifts that he gave. Those gifts, Lord, are equal to the price that he paid. He put great value on grace, and he put great value on the gifts that he gave among men. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, ministry of helps, musicians, Lord, all of us as we, we, we operate under that grace that you've given. So we receive it by faith tonight. We receive the word of the Lord tonight. We receive a teaching. We receive prophecy. We receive, Lord, whatever's in your heart to do tonight for your people to bless them to help yes, them, Lord. to build Thank them up, you, to Jesus. build up the church. Yeah. Lord, the Apostle Paul said, pray for me that utterance yes, would be given to me. Lord, Thank we thank you, you for that divine inspiration on his words, divine yeah. inspiration to speak, divine inspiration to talk, divine inspiration to illustrate and to, to reveal and to unveil all the things, Lord, that are in the word tonight for us, for every listener. Yeah. For every yeah. for every oh, pastor, oh, for all the other yeah. gifts that are in the body of yeah. Christ, yes, that Lord. this gift through oh, Brother Copeland and Pastor George yes, and our musicians, yes, that those gifts, Lord, the, all of them, the, most the, in particular, the, Brother the, Copeland, the, that that the, gift, the, Lord, would be the, lifted the, to a the, level the, that lifts those yes, that hear, Jesus. lifts all the other yes, gifts, Jesus. the other pastors and yes, teachers, Lord. that Lord. lifts Lord. other musicians, that lifts parents, that lifts moms and dads, that lifts that lifts. Our, our first yes, responders yes, that list Lord. government yes, officials. Lord. Lord, they're just people. They are clueless and don't know apart from Lord, you. Yeah. And all of their smarts, they're not smart enough, but you are. And so we're asking you, Lord, that words tonight minister life, minister wisdom, minister strength, minister help to those that are looking to you. And Lord, even those that are not for our behalf, we ask for it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, and we give you praise. Yes, we, we give you praise. Yes, we, we give you praise. Yes, we give you praise. Lord, yes, we're asking we you to multiply oh, these multiply. words, Lord, that, that they them. operate yes. not only yes. naturally yes. in what we hear, but Lord, that oh, those I'm words I'm reverberate through the realm yeah. of the a spirit yes. and that they change yes. things, Come on. that they're not yeah. just Bible yeah. lessons, yeah. but they change yeah. things. Yeah. They change yeah. this nation. Yeah. They change yeah. situations. Yeah. They change world events and world affairs. We thank you, Lord, that evil is uprooted in the name of Jesus. We thank you for that. Kingdoms are uprooted. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places are, are moved aside and taken down. Jesus, you said that you cast out spirits by your word. So let the word, Lord, be anointed tonight to move spiritual beings out of the way and that are in the way and release the work of angels in our nation and around the world. And we give you praise yes, for it in Jesus' name. Yes, we, we give you praise. We give you Thank praise you for the word of the Lord. Yes, we give you praise Jesus. for that. We give you praise Thank for that, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. And we ask you, Lord, for that free flow, that easy, free flow of the Holy Spirit tonight. The easy, free flow. The easy, free flow in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for the unity of the Spirit, unity of faith. Lord, from this moment through the end of this service tonight, we declare in the name of Jesus, the word of the Lord, the will of God, and the free flow of grace. Amen. 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 Amen.